Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, welcome to a very special edition of RPV City Talk on the Road. I'm at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center with our great Mayor of RPV, Mayor Brian Campbell. Great to have you back here. Thanks so much that for having good. me. We're taking our show on the road, the Mayor and I, and this is a perfect time to come to the Interpretive Center because we are in whale watch season right now and whale of a day is coming up. Don't you love being here at this time of year? I love whale of a day. <laughs> we, we've been coming here for whale of a day since my kids were too young to walk. Uh, and what I am so pleased to see is that every year we've got more and more whales coming. I mean, the, the, the numbers have multiplied dramatically. All right. I was talking to some of the, uh, the staff here, and they said they're having a great season. And the whale of a day this year, by the way, is March 11th. Right. 33rd annual. I think you pretty much, I want to say you're guaranteed it's whales, but usually you get that migration's yes. happening. It's peak. Um, lots happening. The, um, they have you know food, entertainment, and it's educational, right? We want the community to learn when they come here about this incredible resource. Well, well they do. There's there's lots of, uh, of booths set up where you can learn about the you know the fauna up here in the peninsula, the history. They bring in other uh, other animals down here that uh, w with their with their handlers that you can learn from them. And there's there's lots to do. And and uh, parking's easy. They've got buses that come every five minutes right. or so, and it flows very easily. All right. I'm glad you mentioned that because you've got it. You park up at City Hall, and then there's shuttles that get you down here. Correct. So that that some people just walk it. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully, by the way, um, if on that day it rains, um, it, I don't think it usually does that, it will be a rain date of April 8th, but for now it's March 11th, and talking about the rains, we've had a lot. We needed the rains. Um, how did the city do overall? How did we fare with these heavy rains? I don't know if there's more on the horizon coming up. I didn't look at the weather report today, but... We did much better than perhaps some people would have thought. Uh, a big, uh, a big win for the city was the fact that we went ahead years ago when I was first on the council and uh, built the San Ramon Canyon uh, drainage uh, project. It was the largest uh, project that the city's ever engaged in. If we had not had that in place this winter, we would have guaranteed had significant amount of, of, of road closures. Mm -hmm. uh, PV Drive South heading into San Pedro uh, into, into Trump National would have been closed constantly with the mud flows that we yeah. get even with a light rain. The switchbacks very likely would have suffered severe erosion if not closure themselves. So that was a, a terrific project to have built when we built it during the drought because it is coming into, into a lot of play this winter. So we, we did well and hopefully if there's more rain on the way it will continue. Um, let's and, and, and Michael Throne and, uh, uh, and Nicole Jules over in our public works project or public works department have have done a remarkably good job. They've been out there 24 seven over these long weekends and these terrible storms. But uh, you know, cleaning up the debris that's closed some roads and and some of the uh, come to uh, City Hall and get sandbags. Come okay. to City Hall and get get sand. Get they actually they actually ran out of sand. I mean, they had <laughs> sandbags, but but people did come down to City Hall and they cleaned out all the sand. So mm -hmm. they were they were running around looking. Uh, uh, for more so they, they've really done a great job and I've heard nothing but positive things about that great I was I was traveling so I missed the heavy rains but uh, I saw a lot of footage and it looks like all that my my husband because he's on the IMAC committee they were out right. filming to see how the storm drained the runoff and it all looked like it was going where it was supposed to go right we're in good shape thank you for that update um, we're gonna talk about the month of February two council meetings issues that were coming up you've had a lot of important items that you've been covering um, number one Council, we always say your priority is keeping the public safe in crime stats. Captain Berenger was there and just released the 2016 a crime stats. So what were you thinking when you got the report? It shows that there's a shift now going in a better direction with our crime, right? We're clearly doing better than many other cities throughout Southern California or even California as a, as a whole. There's, there's no secret that there's been an increase in, in crime. Laws have been passed. They've been interpreted uh, in a way where there's more people getting out of incarceration earlier than they would have otherwise in years past. That has, beyond a shadow of a doubt, led to more crime uh, throughout Southern California. We have, I, I'm so pleased that over the last couple of years that we as a council have invested the money 
and time and technology into working with our sheriff's department and, and paying for these new ALPR cameras, for example, the license plate reader cameras out there, and empowering the sheriff's department to really do their job. They've been terrific partners in, in working with us, and what we've seen now is a leveling off of, of crime in an, in an overall environment where it continues to go up. So RPV is, is probably the safest city in Southern California right now. And I'm, I'm proud to have seen everybody pull together and, uh, uh, and get behind it. You definitely have stepped up the efforts in, in terms of resources and to hear, you know, uh, sheriff's deputies saying, you know, you guys are really putting your money where your mouth is because we talk about we all want to make our community safer. But yeah. unless you, the bottom line is you got to put the resources out there. Yeah. We've got, what, two uh, cars designated for the city only. I don't know if you've had, if that's really been a paying off, but I would think so, the visibility alone, right, to have more uh, cars, black and whites, patrolling. It, it, it is paying off. Plus, we... Uh, uh, we also hired the sheriff's department to patrol our open space now uh, to preserve and having that continuity between having the sheriff's department in the preserve and sheriff's department out on the streets it allows them to reinforce each other uh, at, at times when they need more uh, more bodies at a particular uh, location so it's uh, it's a plan that was long in coming in the last couple of years we have really invested, as I said before, the, the, the time, energy, money, and technology uh, into it. And the community is really benefiting now. We've got the uh, the discounted doorbell cameras now right. that, that residents uh, that residents can buy. I mean, I mean I've got to hand it to city management. They've, they've done a, a good job at being creative and engaging with the public and, and helping them also help themselves in and around the, uh, securing their own homes. Right. You mentioned the home security systems that people can go out and purchase and that what you were mentioning this it's a ring.com if you go on the city's website um, it gives you the information about this incentive program if residents right. want to purchase it I think it's still in the mix but you can get a discount just follow up follow it I guess you could follow it on the yeah, it's about half price is, yeah. is what I believe it is it's about a hundred dollars off so the it's, video it's a big difference. records people ringing your yes. bell how that works yes and the people I know that have that have gone out and bought them already love them they, they find it extremely helpful you know, having, like you're saying, the staff and the, the sheriff's department, like collaborating efforts, it, it, we all work together on this one, whether it's Neighborhood Watch. And which brings me to the next issue about this collaborative effort that involves law enforcement, which is the issue in our community of, sadly, of underage drinking. Yes. And the problems that we're seeing with our youth and trying to protect them. And the problem with parents serving alcohol to kids has come to the council's attention where you actually now have an ordinance that came before the council at your last meeting um, called the Social Host Ordinance. Give the community a little rundown about what that is about. Well, we've got a terrific guest coming in a little bit later that is an expert on this. It's Linda Reed from the local school board. And the Social Host Ordinance is something that was originally passed in Southern California in 2006 in Manhattan Beach. And we're lucky to have the former chief of police of Manhattan Beach, Rod Wieda, who has retired and lives in our community and has children in the local schools. So he has gotten together with the local PTA, with the, with the school district, with the teachers, with the administrators, uh, uh, even groups of students, and they have, uh, they passed that in the local PTA, they then brought it to the school district, the school board passed it, and then they're bringing it to the other cities on, on the hill. So I'm proud that Rancho Palos Verdes, which represents two thirds of the students in local public schools, is is the first city to aggressively embrace this. So we just passed that at our meeting last Tuesday on February 21st. And on that note, we are going to follow up. You mentioned we have um, that's going to join us coming up here after the break. We have a member of the school board, Linda Reed. And so we're going to take a quick break, bring Linda back on so she can explain more about this very important ordinance that's now in our community. Yep. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Recently, there has been an increase of burglaries in our community. The Sheriff's Department and the Police Department are working hard to combat the problem and they would like you to get involved. If you see something, say something. If you see something out of the ordinary in your neighborhood, take pictures and call the police. Be on the lookout for unidentified vehicles or persons in your neighborhood and write down license plate numbers and vehicle descriptions so you can give accurate information to law enforcement. Get to know your neighbors and form a neighborhood watch. Let neighbors know when you're out of town so they can watch over your house. Remember to lock your doors even when you're home. Secure gates and backyard access at all times. 
keep valuables out of sight and arm your home with an alarm. Never let strangers inside of your home. Request identification from people who claim they need to work on your house or say they're from the utilities company. If you see something, say something. Let's prevent crime together. For more information on crime prevention, go to the website, lamita.lasd.org. Hi everyone, welcome back to RPV City Talk. I'm here of course with Mayor Campbell and I want to introduce our special guest from the Palos Verdes Peninsula Unified School Board, Vice President of the Board, Linda Reed. Thank you for taking the time out to be here and all you do for the kids in the community. I just want to start there. Absolutely, thank you for having me. You are being involved with a very important issue as is the council, the community is coming together um, to support what is a social host ordinance. The council just heard this idea of passing the ordinance. I'll start with you, Mayor Campbell. Explain for our residents, what is this all about, the, the social host ordinance? Last Tuesday night at our February 21st meeting, this ordinance was introduced and passed by the city council. And with just slight language changes, it'll be brought back at our March 7th meeting where I anticipate that it will be passed again and then it will be shortly thereafter implemented, usually 30 days. So that's the process that we're in uh, right now. I just want to thank Linda here, though, for bringing this to my attention personally once she was on the school board about a year ago. This has, been, this has been a process that has been rolling out, starting with the city of Manhattan Beach. I know uh, former Chief Rod Uida was, was uh, instrumental in making that happen back in 2006, and then Hermosa Beach passed it. Rancho Palos Verdes is now taking the lead up on the hill following the lead of the school district, which just passed it last month, I believe, right past the holidays. And of course, social host ordinance, what this is about is to help um, stop and curb underage drinking that's happening in our community and society, um, really by holding parents accountable for allowing underage drinking. Talk about what this ordinance really is about doing. Well, what this ordinance does is it imposes a civil, it's a civil ordinance and it imposes a fine on parents who supply alcohol to minors who aren't their own children in their homes. So it's the idea of mom and dad tending bar with a bunch of high school students. And this is a serious problem in our community and it's something that the PTA um, and the cities are working together to stop. You're both parents, I'm a parent. Really this is all about safety and really saving lives. It is an issue. I had my teens go through and every day you just pray your kids are not gonna go out there and make the wrong choice. But then when you have parents that are also not making the right choices, how, how, what is your message to parents out there that are considering hosting a party and, and now what this ordinance will do if they choose to serve alcohol? Well, our hope is that the ordinance is a deterrent and it also is something that, that brings up conversations with families about why, why we can't do this anymore, why it probably wasn't a good idea in the first place, how we can't be at a party if the party breaks up, you can't get behind the wheel of a car and drive. Um, it's all those things that we're hoping, you know, they're what our board president Tony Collado has called uncomfortable conversations because no one likes to talk about this, these things. But with the courage of RPV City Council, we're taking the first step to do that. And for you, I know also you're, you have two young boys. Um, you know, how are you addressing this with your own kids to say this is what we're trying to do to help keep kids safe? Well, I had this discussion after we passed it on, on Tuesday night with my oldest son, who's a PV high school student. And he brought up a couple of ideas that we had not even considered, which is it gives the kids an additional tool to also talk to their friends. And if they're at someone's house and some other kids arrive with some alcohol, uh, that they can educate them and use it as a deterrent That's before a parties start or, or get out of hand. So he, uh, he sees it as, uh, as being able to have those conversations amongst their friends. He explained that very often he'll hear from his friends that they're in an environment that they would rather not be in, yeah. mm -hmm. but they don't quite know how to get out of it. And so with all of the discussion now in the community, with the leadership, really it, it, it started with the PTA and, and, and the schools and the teachers and the principals and the school board, uh, before it got to us, we're, we're very happy to join on board, but, but it really is going to resonate, I think, throughout the community, uh, not just with the parents, but with, with the children and, and it, as an education tool 
also about what's appropriate and safe behavior. And a tool for law, an extra tool for law enforcement as well, because explain more how this will work. I mean, if you are serving alcohol and you are caught, it could, it could be a twenty-five hundred dollar fine. Right. Besides, you're, you are breaking the law. So how does this? How is law enforcement teaming up behind this as well? Well, law enforcement um, in the past didn't have a lot of tools to use, so this is just another tool for them um, to be able to just write a ticket to to a parent who is engaging in this behavior. And that's really the key to the whole thing. Um, the, the fine is a deterrent, but it's more even not before we even get to that point. And and it is, so underage drinking is becoming a growing problem. It's not getting any better, especially because of social media. Now kids that say, oh, come to over, and it's not a party with 10 kids, it's 150 exactly. kids. And it, it's, it's they're, they're out of control. What do you want, for, again, for families watching? What, what's your overall message? And obviously, we'll talk more to the mayor about what, what happens next to get this through. Well, our, our PTAs really strongly feel that this is one piece to solve a big problem, and it's one piece of the puzzle and it, it brings up conversations. Our principals feel that this is a crisis situation in our community, and it goes along with a lot of other things with wellness programs, with finding kids other things to do on the weekend. Um, all those other things, parents being more aware of social media and the power of it. I think parents know it's there, but they don't really understand how powerful it is and how smart kids are. Um, and just to really think about talking about this important issue and not hiding it anymore. Okay, well you bring it front to the center stage and really important. Anything you want to add, Mayor Campbell? I know that this is going to come back to the council. You're tweaking the ordinance so that it works um, the way you want it to do and really have an impact on let's let's get this under control, the underage drinking. Well, our interest here obviously, besides being parents, is that two thirds of the students that go to local schools are from Rancho Palos Verdes. Right. So they're all our constituents here and we really felt strongly that all of the work had been done all of the history which proves in other cities such as Manhattan Beach and Hermosa Beach that this sort of ordinance works that that we were able to pass this as quickly as uh, as as we were so uh, yeah I'm with that without a doubt uh, drinking and driving drops when you have ordinances Absolutely. like this uh, disruptions in the neighborhood, uh, the property damage, property damage, uh, that sort of thing, without a doubt, is uh, will move in a positive direction with this sort of ordinance. Right. I think Suzanne Seymour, one of your colleagues on the board, stated something like 32 states right now in the country are, have these. Yes. 150 yes. cities have adopted these, so you know we're on, you're on track, we're and on it's, right, it's we're on the right track. Finally, the right. <laughs> we, um, it was time to bring it to the other three cities on the hill. Um, who will hopefully follow the leadership of our PD. Okay. And in the last three days, I've had more positive feedback on this issue from passing this at, uh, at our Tuesday night meeting than on any issue I've dealt with for several years now. So there is huge Excellent. community support. You feel this. that. You saw by the speakers, if anybody watches that city council meeting, you had the former Manhattan police chief that was there speak, speaking out on how important this is because you are there everybody sees what's going on with the kids and it's really comes down to it is a life and death situation it for is. some of these kids Absolutely. and um, all right anything you want to add we've got to wrap it up but we know we'll be watching the next council meeting to see what what happens there I think you've um, addressed you. this nicely Perfect. and thank you for doing what you're doing for uh, the kids yeah, Linda, thanks. About yes yeah the, L Linda thanks a lot I mean, yeah. I mean you've done an enormous amount of work on this and uh, and it's very much appreciated well, I hope so, and I really want to thank Mr. Rod Oyeda, who first brought this to our attention he was um, a over a year chief. ago. He's a former police chief and a parent at Palos Verdes High School who said we have to have this in our community, and he wouldn't take no for an answer. And we're just on along with his on his coattails. All right. it, it was it was a terrific example of of community government collaboration, yes. which allowed this to happen as fast as it did. Okay, just want to wrap it up. Again, thank you, Linda Reed, for being here, representing all of the kids in our community and serving. We're going to take a break. Anything you want to add, though, before we uh, take a break? Just thanks to you for bringing up this very important issue, and I want to thank Rod Yeda for first bringing it to our attention, and also PTA Council President Beth Meyerhoff, who has spearheaded all the moms and, the, and dads in the community to work on this issue. And, and Anitra also uh, was... Anitra Bornheimer also is a parent who's the social media expert, and, and she really... Uh, drove it home on that issue too. Mm -hmm. They say it takes a village. It does. Thank you for doing this. And there's a lot more to come here on RPV City Talk. Don't go away. We'll be right back. When there is an increase in vehicle thefts and burglaries, you must be extra vigilant in securing your vehicle. If you see anyone who looks suspicious, don't hesitate. Call the police. Having an alarm on your car can help prevent a break-in. 
but be sure you don't leave any valuable items, such as laptops or other electronics in plain view. Don't leave your keys in the ignition or leave your vehicle unattended with the engine running. Finally, get to know your neighbors and talk to them about forming a neighborhood watch. For more information on crime prevention, please go to the website lomita.lasd.org or call your local sheriff station at 310-539-1661. Welcome back to RPV City Talk here again with Mayor Brian Campbell. We're going to talk about another item that's before the council, and that is you're looking into implementing a citywide comprehensive noise ordinance. So for our viewers, and especially our residents, explain what's happening with that and, and the planning for a noise ordinance and why we need it. This is actually a much more interesting topic than you might think. Uh, it's going to get noisy. It is. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it is going to get noisy, I'm sure, at the council meeting. But what we want to be able to do is start looking long term on how we can reclaim back some of the sense of quiet and solitude that was what brought many of us up here to live in the peninsula to start with. And over the years, as home sizes have expanded, as new homes all have air conditioning systems, as pools have larger, more powerful, loud pumps, jacuzzis, cars, all of this adds to an increase in our ambient noise in, in the background. Much of it we gradually get used to, but we don't really notice it. If you go to Hollywood, for example, and, and talk to uh, uh, and talk to them about how do they get their, uh, how do they tell their story on the big screen? And the average person will tell you, well, it's all visual or mostly visual. What they'll tell you, people like Steven Spielberg who are experts in this, is that our sensory perception in a movie is half sound mm -hmm. with surround sound and those new technologies, the Dolby surround sound, for example, and half up on the film. And so. What we want to be able to do is, is over the years, as our ambient background noise has increased in our neighborhoods from the pools, the air conditioning, the leaf blowers that uh, 30 years ago, people didn't use leaf blowers. I mean, we, they went out and, and they did their own lawn or they raked it up. Now we, now we use these, these loud leaf blowers. Take a good look at the technologies that are available out there right now, gradually implement them over a period of time as equipment wears out as it needs to be replaced uh, and and reclaim some of our uh, some of our sense of uh, solitude uh, on that okay I know it was at the last council meeting when you were addressing this there was a list of things to add or remove from the ordinance so where are you guys in the planning process and in terms of the community also giving input like as to how this goes well the community gives us lots of input as we go along just via email or calling up emails very uh, is, is very impactful on it what we've done is that we've given staff now a list of items that we definitely want included in the noise ordinance for example leaf blowers uh, for example, pool pumps, uh, that uh, if you've got a pool pump that generates more noise than a certain decibel amount, then you'll be given a certain number of years to replace that with a more modern one that pollutes less, makes less uh, uh, noise. There are certain restrictions that we can uh, we can we can start implementing right away. For example, is in in how much noise do we allow from say tree cutting on Sunday mornings? I mean, we can start restricting some of the hours of, of when that sort of thing uh, uh, when that sort of okay. thing happens. But when I first served on the general plan update uh, committee some years ago, even back then, it was obvious that our original noise ordinance in our city was not keeping up with how the city had changed over those years. And, I, and I'll give you an example. The current noise ordinance only impacts noise that's generated within a few feet of the property line. Okay. If, if it's more than 65 decibels and it's generated within, say, about five feet from the property line, you can require that that be toned down. But if it's more than 65 decibels and it's eight feet from the property line, there's nothing you can do about it. Well, that doesn't make sense now in in, in today's world with all of the noise generating things that uh, that we do. Now, last year, we reduced some of the hours where heavy construction could be done in our neighborhoods. I think that was really a, a smart idea. Anybody that's uh, that's 
had small children knows like myself you um, knows that when you got little kids they go to bed early and they're supposed to go to bed early yeah prior <laughs> prior to this modification of the, of the hours or when you could do construction uh, you know they could be doing things till till much later than when your kids would be going to bed and so we we've, we've scaled that back so we've really already started moving in that direction and this I think is going to be something that's going to serve us well for uh, for years to come so we'll stay tuned to see that on future agendas and at council meetings. Anything, you know, you've been mayor now since January and, and it's going well. And anything you want to let the community know about any announcements from you as mayor or just things to look forward to coming up in the next months that are important to the residents in the city? Well, separate and aside from, you know, important items like Whale of a Day coming up <laughs> and, and the, you know, Memorial Day and for the 4th of July celebration up at, uh, up, up at City Hall, when you're the mayor, you're in charge of running the meeting, and everybody's got their own separate style of doing it. Mine is very up-tempo, as we say in the military. I still serve in the military reserves, but mine is up-tempo. I like to get a lot done. I encourage collaboration between the council people. Uh, I, As long as we're advancing the discussion forward, I like it when council people ask each other questions directly so that I only have to intervene if I need to get the meeting back on track. So. One thing I think you will see, and I've already gotten positive comments from my colleagues on the council, is that they appreciate the fact that we are getting a lot done and our meetings don't go quite as late as they do in the evening, yet we still get all of our work done. I don't believe that when a meeting runs late, and when I was first on the council seven years ago, our <laughs> meetings ran till one, two o'clock right, in the morning. I remember, because I've been covering these meetings for a long for, time. For, I'm for appreciating long, those for, two the short ones. <laughs> yeah, for, for, for a long time. And I don't believe from my own professional experience, from my own military experience and my city council experience, that you make your best uh, decisions or you have the best debates on the topics when it's happening at one o'clock in the morning. Right. Well, keep it up. And I know we got budget talks coming up soon. Yes. So that's going to be a priority, setting the budget for the next year. Lots to happen. But right now, what's happening, whale of a day coming up, whereas we're wrapping up the show, being here in the Interpretive Center, and we're sitting in this history room. We got, you know, Mr. Vandalip over there. This is a treasure, right? I mean, the, all year round, people need to come here and enjoy this resource the city provides. This is an extraordinary building. And, and what, uh, what people should realize is that they regularly rotate around different exhibits and they bring new ones in. And mm -hmm. so we've got tremendous docents uh, down here that look after the interpretive center that act as, as guides, teachers. We've got lots of school kids, local school kids that come through here. Just as we were uh, filming, I've noticed uh, quite an international uh, group yeah. of visitors that are, that are coming to our city and they're visiting PVIC and not probably 20 yards from where we're sitting right now is the best whale watching in the western United States. So this is a great place to come. We come down here on a regular basis, myself and, and my own family. Yes, well, it's wonderful to have it here. And I want to thank you for joining us. We'll have you again back next month. We'll, we'll, we'll decide where we're going. We're going to go around the city to all the, all the hot spots. So you got a deal. Thanks for doing what you're doing for the community. And that's going to do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. We hope to see you at Whale of a Day, by the way, on March 11th. Have a great day, everybody.